Hi, this is Brent with Emotiva Audio, and the purpose of today's video is to walk you through how to take an existing uh, surround setup that's based on an AVR. This is a, a fairly typical Marantz AVR. This will apply to, to you know any, any brand of AVR, and to connect it to one of our external amplifiers, like this Basics A5 amplifier. Um, this is one of the most popular upgrades uh, to home theater systems is adding an external amp for either some or all of your speakers to boost the power available to those speakers. Um, not only can you get more, speak more power to the speakers that need it, um, but you can take off some of the primary load from your AVR, allowing it to better power you know, the speakers that are still connected and perform its other duties. Um, so using an external amp, a very popular upgrade. And just need to walk through how um, you can safely take the connections, transfer them over to your amplifier, and get everything working together nicely. So first, we wanna talk about the really one requirement your AVR needs in order to connect with an external amplifier. And that is a set of RCA pre-out connections. Um, though they're almost always labeled pre-outs, some receivers only will have them for a sub or only the front two channels, but many AVRs will have a full set of pre-outs for all your channels. Um, now there are speaker level to RCA converters available on the market that you can buy, and while they will get sound to the amplifier, they're really more intended for car audio use and, and really won't work um, if you're trying to use an AVR that doesn't have pre-outs. So pre-outs are really one of the requirements, and, and we're gonna go ahead and start uh, moving some of our speaker channels from the AVR to the amplifier by first connecting some of these pre-outs, which basically send the low-level signal for each channel before it ever reached the, the amplifiers of the Marantz to this amplifier instead. So we're just kinda you know jumping in before the signal gets to these amps and taking that signal to an external amp. And, and what I'm gonna do is start with the center channel and just kinda illustrate how I might move that over. And so, the first thing I'm gonna do is look for these center pre-out on my AVR. And here I see it marked C. I have a single RCA connection for each channel. It's a very common question to say, well, I have a red and a white, but there's only one input on each channel of the amp for an RCA. Well, each of those red and white, for example, carry one channel of information, so they'll get connected to individual inputs of the amplifier, which are, are all identical. Now, I'm connecting the center channel. This is just kind of out of, out of habit, but I'm gonna start in the center channel of the amplifier and connect the center channel pre-out to the input on that middle channel number three of the amp. Now, I could have just as easily connected it to channel one. All of the channels are identical. Uh, this middle channel doesn't have to be the center, but that's just kind of how we tend to do things, work on the center and then and work our way out. Um, so because this channel in the middle, channel three, is where I connected my center channel pre-out, that means that when I go look at my speaker connections, I'm gonna take my center channel speaker connection and that is the speaker that I'm gonna line up my black and my red and connect to uh, that exact same channel where my center channel pre-out is connected. Um, and of course, after redoing all these connections, it's good practice to go into the settings of your receiver and play some test tones to the various channels to ensure that the output is coming from the appropriate speakers so that you have all your connections lined up. But the important thing is that wherever I connect my center channel pre-out, I connect my center channel speaker. And then I'll continue um, with my next RCA cable. Of course, I need five total RCAs for, for five channels, and we sell these individual RCAs uh, on our website. So I'm gonna do my front left channel next. So I'm gonna connect my front left uh, pre-out to any channel of the amp. I'm gonna pick uh, the channel that viewing from the front would be to the left of the center, because that just kind of you know is, is makes sense to me. Um, you can do it however you like. And so because I connected my front left pre-out there, I'm gonna take my front left speaker cables and I'm going to connect that to the corresponding channel. Again, all channels identical. Uh, we just have to make sure that we keep these things straight as we're making connections and we'll do the same for the remainder of the channels uh, very quickly. So I'll take my front right pre out here and connect it on the other side of my center um, to this channel that, that I choose. And then of course that's where I'll take my, my front right uh, speaker cable and connect it over here um, to that, that same channel where I just connected the pre-out. So it's all about just keeping straight uh, in your head while you're doing this. I like to do one at a time, uh, kind of moving the connection so I know that I'm moving the correct one. Um, you can also you know label your cables and all those things. Um, and so right now I've connected my center, my front left and front right. And typically we wanna prioritize the external power amp on our front stage 
page first. So the Basics A3 is very popular for doing that. If I'm using a Basics A5, the other channels I'd probably want to prioritize are my left and right surrounds. Then if I was using a seven channel amp, I would want to do my rear surrounds next or maybe some height channels. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and find my preouts for SR and SL. That's going to be surround right and surround left. So I'll take my surround left preout and run it into this channel, right? I could just as easily have chosen the other open channel. And I'll take my surround left speaker cable and connect it to the corresponding channel. And same thing, get my last fifth RCA cable and go from my surround right pre out to the last remaining open channel of the amplifier. And then move the corresponding surround right speaker cable to that channel. Now I'll note here, it's very important that we make and break any connections on either your AVR or the amplifier with them both either fully powered down or at least in standby um, to avoid damage to the amp. And I also wanna point out that, notice I no longer have any speakers connected to the internal amplifiers of the Marantz. And as long as I am using an external amp for my center channel say, I will not use the center channel amplifier in the Marantz. We cannot combine these in any way. Don't try to connect this amp to this amp or, or it could cause damage. Um, so at this point, we'd be ready to turn on both these units and the Marantz, instead of feeding signal to these amplifiers, is using the pre-outs to send signal to our external amp. If you had a sixth and seventh speaker, you very easily could allow the Marantz to continue to power those um, and kind of use some on the external amp, some still on the receiver. Um, one last additional item that we want to connect, however, is uh, the 12 volt trigger cable that's included with your basics amplifier. And what this cable allows you to do is connect to, uh, sometimes called a DC out, uh, sometimes called a trigger out of your AVR. And if we run that trigger cable to the trigger input of our basics amp, or really any of our amplifiers, whenever you take this Marantz AVR out of standby, it will send that trigger signal as it powers on to the trigger input of the basics amp and it will power on as well so that you don't have to manually power on the amplifier via the front switch. It will turn off and on along with your AVR and that's a very common feature on uh, most AVRs. So at this point, I know it's a little messy because we had to show these side by side, um, but we have our AVR fully connected to our external amplifier. We've connected all the pre-outs kept track of where we were connecting each pre-out so we could line up the appropriate speaker. And then from here, it's a good idea to play test tones through all your channels to make sure your speakers are connected to the proper output and rerun any room correction software um, that you may have used in the past. Anytime we make a change to our speakers or add an external amplifier with different characteristics, um, we'll probably want to rerun our room correction to make sure things are back in balance. Or of course, you can do that manually as well. Um, uh, one note, uh, just because it's a very common question when folks get a, an external amp and add it to an AVR. A uh, very common question, well, why when I set the same exact volume setting on my receiver, are my speakers not playing any louder than they were before, I thought that adding additional power would mean that my speakers will just play louder at the same volume setting. And, and while that's somewhat partially correct, um, it's really the gain of the amplifier, not the power rating that determines how loud it will play at any given volume setting. Um, or the gain of our amplifiers is a very standard 29 dB, uh, probably very similar to what's found in, in many AVRs. And th that means the signal is gonna get multiplied by the same amount uh, at the same volume setting. Um, but what you'll find with additional power is not just that it plays louder at the same volume setting, but that you can continue to increase the volume or at that same volume, even if it doesn't get louder, it will feel less strained, you'll get more detail um, because the amplifiers are, are really not working as hard in this amp as they likely are in, in the AVR, which just has a lot of other tasks to accomplish. Uh, so, you know, if you find the volume levels relatively the same, that's completely normal. Um, it has to do with gain uh, rather than power. Thank you for joining me today, and hopefully this video was informative as you consider purchasing a basic amplifier for your existing AVR, or as you're connecting your basic amp to your existing AVR setup. From all of us here at Emotiva, happy listening.